Onstage meltdowns are an obligatory part of rock music, often resulting in epic temper tantrums, physical altercations, or even demands for refunds when an artist is way too intoxicated to perform. So let's take a look at some of the most memorable rock star meltdowns of all time, starting with Motley Crue's Nikki Six, whose ballistic 1997 onstage outburst would even result in a federal lawsuit for the band. It all started when Six saw a venue security guard allegedly roughing up fans at a cruise show. The situation intensified as Six not only physically assaulted the security guard, but also ordered fans in the crowd to attack him. Six would then cause a major uproar when he repeatedly used racial slurs against the guard, resulting in widespread criticism of the bassist. Following the incident, the security guard in question filed a lawsuit against Motley Crue, with the 80s rock band ultimately choosing to settle out of court. This next meltdown, however, may be the most cringe-inducing of all time, as Marilyn Manson's drunken performance at the 2012 Soundwave Festival would see the shock rocker stumble across the stage and slur his words, as he demanded even more alcohol. Why is it that every time you give me a fucking beer, you fucking homosexual. Not no offense to gay people. I mean, in a degrading homosexual way. Give me a fucking beer. I swear, I do not have with underage girls. I swear. And the, your Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. The wildest moment of the meltdown, however, came when Manson presented a vial filled with an unidentified narcotic and sprinkled it onto the crowd, undoubtedly breaking several laws in the process. I swear I know I'm a convicted drug offender, but I did not put this up I didn't, it wasn't made here. You guys, because I'm a good Samaritan, a good American, I want to respect Australia and its drug laws, and I want to just give back to the community. And speaking of musicians too wasted to perform, glam metal band Poison once put on easily the messiest televised performance of all time, thanks to a number of drunken slip-ups. It all took place at the 1991 MTV Video Music Awards, where Poison guitarist CC DeVille was visibly intoxicated throughout the night, foreshadowing the disaster that was about to unfold. Once they hit the stage, Poison would only make it through one minute of the song, Unskinny Bop, before a miscommunication of some kind brought the show to an awkward halt. Even host Arsenio Hall's attempt to salvage the situation by reintroducing the band did little to turn things around. <laughs> I'll give him one anyway. Poison! Frontman Brett Michaels would then make things even worse when he tried to fire up the confused crowd by asking if they were ready to quote, talk dirty to him, a reference to the band's 1987 hit. This unintentionally triggered the intoxicated DeVille to launch into an unrehearsed performance of Talk Dirty to Me instead of returning to Unskinny Bop as planned. The rest of the band attempted to keep up, but once DeVille's guitar got accidentally unplugged, any hope of rest rescuing the performance went out the window. And while Poison's performance was ruined by its own guitarist, this next band's show was intentionally sabotaged, as Iron Maiden's Ozfest 2005 set saw the legendary group being mercilessly pelted with eggs and bottles. You see somebody throwing some sh at this battle, they raise their arm, make sure that when it goes down, it's in two pieces. Yeah. 
Despite frontman Bruce Dickinson's repeated warnings, the egg throwing did not stop, leading to him furiously losing his temper multiple times throughout the show and even threatening members of the audience. To make matters worse, Iron Maiden also had to deal with a number of technical issues which resulted in the band losing power multiple times throughout their set. It was later revealed that this series of unfortunate events was purposely orchestrated by none other than Sharon Osbourne. Apparently, in retaliation to disparaging comments Dickinson had made about her husband, Ozzy Osbourne. I got 200 Hispanic kids, loaded them with eggs, they had peanut butter, <laughs> they f***ing pelted the <laughs> out of them. And while Sharon rose to the defense of her husband, an enraged Sebastian Bach would have to protect his elderly mother from being shoved at one of his shows. Hey, you wanna f***ing stop the show? That's my f***ing mother right there, you jack off! I'll f***ing be your f***ing face in! The former Skid Row frontman was understandably irate and could not be calmed down, continuing on an expletive-filled rant for some time. Go f*** around with my f***ing mother if you It's unclear whether Bach's mother was intentionally pushed or if someone was pushed into her, but the singer still made sure to check on her and make sure she was okay. And speaking of rock star moms, Five Finger Death Punch frontman Ivan Moody would experience a heartbreaking meltdown on stage as his mother lay dying in the hospital. The family emergency resulted in the band being over an hour late to their performance, and Moody would take to the microphone to let the audience know the reason he had kept them waiting, but all was not as it appeared. My mother, my mother, is actually passing along today, and I chose to be here instead of with her. The following day, Moody's younger sister would reveal that Ivan was lying. Their mother was alive and well, adding that she believed her brother was drunk and made the story up as an excuse for his behavior. Less than a year later, Moody was at the center of yet another infamous onstage meltdown when he no-showed a Five Finger Death Punch concert in the Netherlands, leaving the band scrambling before ultimately finding singer Tommy Vex to fill in for him. But when Moody finally decided to show up, he seemed to take offense to another singer taking his place. Everybody has these rumors about me. Guess what? I was a little bit late. I'm sorry. But there is no other singer for Five Finger Death Punch. The rest of the concert would proceed to go very poorly. As Moody threatened to leave Five Finger Death Punch and demanded the crowd chant his name as his bandmates looked on in disgust. Do you want this to be my last show with Five Finger Death Punch? Say Ivan. Ivan! Ivan! And that's called ego. <laughs> Following the disastrous performance, Moody would check himself into rehab. Which brings to mind this next meltdown, wherein a band's alcoholic lead singer hit rock bottom on stage as his bandmates begged him to go to rehab. It all took place at an Asking Alexandria show in March of 2011, where frontman Danny Warsnop had drank to the point where he could barely stand, and the crowd let him know they were not happy. Warsnop would only further provoke his disappointed fans, defiantly reveling in their chance of disapproval as he slurred through his words. Everyone who thinks I'm a drunk piece of shit, put their hands up. <laughs> this song goes out to you little pussies who don't do a fucking 
That's when guitarist Ben Bruce would try to hold a spontaneous intervention for the belligerent lead singer, asking fans to support the band in sending Warsnop to rehab. Ignore him, ignore him. Who here, fate, who here, will support us and put in my best friend through rehab and making it better? Put your hands up. And speaking of unpredictable lead singers, this next meltdown takes us back to the 1996 VMAs, where the original members of Van Halen finally reunited after a bitter split with frontman David Lee Roth in the previous decade. Fans were delighted by Roth's return. However, the joy was short-lived, as while presenting the Best Male Video Award, Roth went off script several times, doing all he could to soak up the attention from the crowd, annoying his bandmates in the process. Yes. No, no, no. It, it's, it, instead of the best award thing, it's we, we have to make an announcement. Just We have to address a subject here. This is the first time that we've actually stood on stage together in over a decade. A visibly irate Eddie Van Halen would eventually have to forcefully pull Roth away from the microphone, with the singer responding by gyrating his hips towards the audience. Okay, okay, we'll get to... <laughs> okay. Things did not get better when that night's winner, Beck, took to the stage to accept his award, as Roth would undercut his moment by dancing behind him during his speech. After that, Roth and Eddie nearly got into a fistfight backstage, and the reunion was immediately cancelled. Of course, no list of onstage meltdowns would be complete without Guns N' Roses frontman Axl Rose. The singer once even dove into a crowd to pummel a fan who was taking taking pictures of him during a show. However, today we're going to take a look at a more subtle occurrence, which saw the musician facing backlash from his family in the wake of his tell-all 1992 interview with Rolling Stone magazine. How some of the members of my family and some of the friends of my family have taken a great offense at what I said in this magazine. It's a shame, what, look what he's done to his mother. His mother can't even go out of the house now. It was amazing my mother could have gone out of the house before knowing this shit she fucking knew. Clearly experiencing a complex emotional struggle, Rose highlighted the irony of his family's reaction, who showed more concern for his disclosure of childhood trauma than the trauma itself. The family doesn't want to be embarrassed by these things coming out. We just don't want to have to deal with this, and we shouldn't have to deal with this publicly. But if we don't deal with it publicly, then we're probably not going to deal with the bullshit at all. And I'll bet they like it that way. Rose would conclude his impassioned speech by urging members of the audience to confront their own traumas head on, emphasizing the importance of not allowing these experiences to define their lives. And if a f***ing scrawny little high junior high 90 pound weakling can finally get his ass up here and take this shit on so can any one of you that have the same fucking bullshit problems in your life they don't have to get away with it and speaking of rolling stone this next musician would tell the magazine that he just can't bring himself to watch the footage of his infamous blackout drunk meltdown in las vegas which we're going to dive into next the incident unfolded during the 2012 iHeartRadio music festival where green day frontman billy joel armstrong went into a drunken rage after being told he had just one minute to wrap up his set i've been around since it's f***ing 1980 And you're gonna give me one f***ing minute? You gotta be f***ing kidding me! The promoters of the pop-leading festival allegedly cut Green Day's performance short in order to give more time to R&B singer Usher. And Armstrong was sure to let event organizers know exactly how he felt about it. I'm not f***ing Justin Bieber, you motherfuckers. This is a f***ing 
joke. The frontman would then destroy his guitar before storming off stage, giving officials the finger on his way out. Moving on from Billy Joe to Billy Joel, the piano man had an unintentionally hilarious meltdown during a historic 1986 performance in Moscow. This show would mark the first live rock broadcast in Soviet history, but there was just one problem. The film crew kept turning on the bright house lights so that they could get better shots, which sent Joel into a frenzy as he vented his frustrations by screaming amidst his lyrics. Stop whining the audience! Why does it always seem to hit me in the middle of the night? Stop it! Let me do my show, for Christ's sake! Still, the lights were not turned off, and an enraged Joel responded by flipping his piano over and breaking a microphone stand in half without missing a beat, which is more than we can say about the Atari's drummer Rob Fellocetti, who was attacked by the band's frontman Chris Rowe for being so drunk during a 2012 performance that he couldn't play. Rowe would lash out by picking up any and every instrument he could get his hands on, hurling guitar guitars and several drums at fellow Chetty before taking to the microphone to call out his inebriated bandmate. Our drummer's failing it tonight. I don't know what the problem is, but I'm gonna finish the set for myself. I'll play a few songs, whatever you wanna hear, but I can't do this. Sorry, sorry. We all have bad shows, but that's embarrassing. I can't handle it. Although fellow Chetty was subsequently fired, he was luckily not injured by the flying instruments. Unlike concert photographer Chelsea Lauren, who had her camera kicked into her face by Queens of the Stone Age frontman Josh Homme in December of 2017, resulting in injuries that required medical treatment. Although Homme would initially claim that he had been kicking over lighting equipment and was unaware that he had kicked Lauren, she would quickly dispute this. Stay stating that Hami had made eye contact before kicking her, and even providing pictures to back up her claims. Hami later owned up to his actions and apologized through an emotional video on the band's Instagram. I don't have any excuse or reason uh, to justify what I did. I was a total dick, and, uh, and I'm truly sorry, and I hope you're okay. And while Hami was surprisingly never sued over this incident, this next band put on such an embarrassingly bad show that fans organized a class action lawsuit against them. Fans take revenge on a rock group after a concert they say was awful. Creed frontman Scott Stapp was apparently so intoxicated during a 2002 concert in Chicago that he was unable to recall a single lyric to one of their songs. This is about corporate greed. It's not about a drunk performer or a bad performance. It's about doing what's right. Stapp would publicly deny allegations that he was drunk during an appearance on the Abrams Report. But that was not the whole story behind this infamous evening. First question we got to deal with was that that night, were you drunk and or medicated? No. Come on. No. While the lawsuit was ultimately dismissed, Stapp would later admit in his autobiography that he had, in fact, drank a considerable amount of whiskey before hitting the stage in Chicago that night. And while there are no videos of Creed's infamously terrible performance, the Sex Pistols had their public disintegration immortalized on video. Despite being at the absolute peak of their career, the British band's first US tour was played plagued by infighting and rampant drug use, all of which culminated at the last stop of the tour in San Francisco, where disillusioned lead singer Johnny Rotten made it clear that he didn't want to be there. You'll get one number and one number only, cause I'm a lazy b this is no fun. As the song reaches its end, you can even witness the exact moment that Rotten realizes that the band is over. The singer would speak to the audience one last time before throwing down his microphone and walking off stage. Ever get the feeling you've been cheated? Good night. And while the Sex Pistols fell apart, next we'll take a look at the members of Metallica banding together after an extremely difficult time for frontman James Hetfield, which saw him return to rehab as well as divorce from his wife of 25 years. During an emotional onstage breakdown in 2022, the singer would confess that he was reluctant to hit the stage that evening due to his mounting insecurities. I gotta tell you, I wasn't feeling very good. 
before I came out here. Feeling a little bit insecure, like, I'm an old guy, I can't play anymore, all this bullshit that I tell myself in my head. Hetfield would go on to share the story of how he opened up to his bandmates in Metallica, confiding in them about his feelings, and expressing gratitude for the unwavering support he received. So, I talked to these guys, and they helped me, as simple as that. They gave me a hug and said, hey, if you're struggling on stage, we got your back. And I tell you, it means the world to me. That's when his bandmates, Lars, Kirk, and Robert walked over to give James a group hug, which overwhelmed the singer with emotion as he began to openly weep on stage. Hetfield would then look up to the audience and say words that everyone, including James himself, needed to hear. And seeing you out there, I, I am not alone. If you enjoyed this video, then you have to watch this one next. Rockstar slipping out at fans in concert. It's filled with crazy stories about your favorite bands that you have to hear to believe. Click here now to see why this is one of our most viewed videos ever.